how God continues to work for us. Um, I have dropped the link, the Morning Manor Connect form link in the chat. So if you have not yet filled it out, uh, please go ahead and do so. This gives us an opportunity to learn more about you, to connect with you. And also you will get an email in response. Actually, you will get two emails. So if you filled out the form once before, you need to change something. The first email that you get, which uh, records your filling out the form, you can actually go back to that link and update whatever you need to update. But you will also get an email that gives you information of how to connect outside of Morning Manor with your Morning Manor family. So we're looking forward to, you know, continue connecting and just being there for each other as a Morning Manor family. So the link is in the chat. It'll probably appear in the chat a few more times. If you have not yet filled it out, do go ahead and fill out the link. Um, this morning, we have several birthdays. And we will be singing Elder Floyd, Pastor Floyd. I hope you're listening, uh, you're, you're, you're watching that because we will be singing the birthday songs later on today um, as we celebrate all the birthdays that have been taking place. There are several birthdays. So we are in a celebration mode today, not just celebrating the upcoming Sabbath, but the birthdays. Um, additionally, I am going to ask right now, uh, Sister Trinice, are you in a position to pray for our speaker um, today? We're going to go into our next season of prayer, and I'm going to ask um, if you're able to pray, Sister Trinice, um, that you Most also pray. Gracious. Go ahead. I'm sorry. You can you 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 may also pray for um Sister Kristen Jackson, especially with what she's experiencing with the baby, and there's several other prayer requests. So as you as the spirit lead, please um pray for our speaker and pray for the requests that are in the chat today. Thank you. We come to you at this time, dear God. We're just pausing at this very second of this brand new day, oh God, that we have never seen before. I ask that you may empty me out and fill me with your Holy Spirit, oh God. Father God, I pray that there's nothing within me, dear God, that will hinder this prayer request from reaching your throne, oh God. Father God, this prayer list is getting longer and longer, Father God, but we know that we are covered, God. We are covered by you, oh God. Father God, be with Sister Christian in a special way, oh God. Father God, you know her heart, Father God, that's your daughter, dear God, and you know the burden that she carry, oh God. Father God, I pray and ask God that you may continue to strengthen her, oh God. Father God, give her a spirit of expecting a miracle in her life, oh God. Father God, that the miracle that happened on yesterday, prepare her for the ones that you're going to do in the future, oh God. Bless her and her family in a special way. Cover her unborn baby, oh God. Allow her not to have so much heavy stress, dear God, because we know that it's not good for the baby, oh God. Be with her husband in a special way, oh God. Father God, I pray that you show up in their lives, dear God, that he may come on one accord with her, oh God. And she gives you things, he gives you things, oh God. Be with the speaker of the hour that we'll be speaking to their dear God. Let your words flow through the speaker, oh God. Father God, be with every prayer request that is on this list, those that are sick and grieving, oh God. I pray and ask God that you may touch, heal, and deliver, oh God. Father God, I pray and ask God that you be with Pastor Samuel, Pastor Nashon, and Pastor CJ, and Pastor e Elaine, Father God. Be with all the pastors, oh God. Be with all our church family, oh God. Be with those that may be visiting this weekend, dear God. I pray and ask God that they may feel your presence, oh God. For the time that they hit the parking lot, oh God. Prepare their hearts, Father God, for the word that you will be speaking to them, oh God. And all of us, oh God. Father God, I pray and ask God that you be with those that were bold enough on yesterday to put in that prayer request, dear God, for with they having faith to believe, dear God, that you will answer, oh God. We're not just coming to you this morning with doubt, oh God. We're coming to you this morning with belief, oh God. Father God, is as we uh, put in our prayer request, dear God, and when the enemy shows up, dear God, to come and discourage us, oh God, right now in the name of Jesus, oh God, I pray and ask God that we may have the strength to come to you and that he may fight, oh God. Father God, we're trusting in what we need to see, oh God. Father God, we see what's going on in this world, dear God. Help us live to become distracted about what is happening, oh God. Father God, we want to join together, God, on one mind, dear God. And this is also, if Father God is to help 
Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Trinice, for praying for us. The pleasure is mine this morning to introduce our speaker. However, our speaker needs no introduction. Our speaker is no stranger to Morning Manor. Our speaker is Pastor Teddy Williamson of the Southern New England Conference. Uh, last time he was here, we may have introduced him as the Assistant Youth Director. Today, I introduce him to you as the Director for Young Adults and Youth Sabbath School. Pastor Teddy, is the floor is now yours. A family, help us to welcome Pastor Teddy to the platform this morning. Thank you so much, Pastor Nashani. Thank you so much, family, for, for having me. I think the last time I was here, the family was not this size. So it means that the family have grown since the last time I was here. So which is uh, glory, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. And I celebrate with you not only the fact that the family have grown, uh, but tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning, the family will continue to, to extend as you will have a grand baptismal, a grand baptismal service. And I just say to, to God be the glory. And um God may God continue to bless you, Pastor Nashoni and um, Pastor Sam. Uh the Lord continue to bless this ministry that this family will indeed continue to, to expand and continue to, to grow. Let's move from 100 to 200. And of course, we'll, you know, you, you the Lord will bless. <laughs> the Lord will bless. Um, accordingly. Again, thank you so much for the invite and thank everyone for the patience of being here this morning. I'm not sure what time zone we're all coming from, but um, if it's seven o'clock or it's six o'clock or it's five o'clock, it doesn't matter. We're here to give God glory and to give God some praise. Again, may God bless us as we continue to worship him today. Uh, Pastor Nashoni, I'm not sure how much time I have but um, I like the fact that you didn't restrict me to a time. Um, so I'm going to let the Holy Spirit do that, all right? <laughs> I'm going to let the Holy Spirit do that. But um, I'll be cognizant that uh, it's Friday, it's preparation day, and we need to, we need to, to, um, to get stuff ready so that we can be ready for the, for the Sabbath. You know, the last time I was here, <clears throat> I gave you part two of a two-part message. And um, for those of you who may not know, the last time I was here was the first time that I was actually here. And um, if I gave you part two of a two-part message when I was here for the first time, it meant that I didn't give you part one <laughs> of the part two message. <laughs> um, so um, if you will allow me, I am going to go back to the message, I'm going to give you part one of the part two message. The reason why I gave part two before I gave part one is because that's how the Bible have it. 
the Bible actually gave us part two before it did, um, you know, give us part one. And so I'm just basically following the way the this, this story is listed in, in, in scripture. But the truth is, if you look at it carefully, it is not listed in chronological order. In fact, we, we get part two uh, before we did receive part one. I'm talking specifically of the story of the great king called Ezekiah. In part one, you'll remember <clears throat> that Ezekiah was under attack from this king of Assyria called Sennacherib. And there, Ezekiah, after being under attack, he, he decided that the, the best weapon that he could use to defeat his enemy was to make sure that he journeyed into the sanctuary. And of course, you know, there's things happened before that, but I, you know, this is just a summary of it. Uh, at the end, he, he took the letter that he got from this king of us, this mighty king called Sinacrib. He, in, you know, instead of trying to, 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 to parade his general, he simply took that letter to 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 the sanctuary and all he did was just to spread that letter before God and we know the end of the story this mighty king instead of trying to uh instead of defeating the army of Judah instead of defeating Judea he had to run for his life when God stood up he had to run for his life that was in chapter 19 of second kings today my brothers and sisters I roll on the story and we get to 2 Kings chapter 20. And 2 Kings chapter 20 starts out in a very, in a very perhaps way that we know very well. Um, we know very well. It's just, in those days, it says in verse 1, Ezekiah the king was sick. But before we go any further in the word of God, before we touch the word of God, we need God's authority before we proceed. So please, wherever you are, Bow your heads with me as we solicit the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit before we go into God's word. Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for your awesome power. We thank you for the presence of your Holy Spirit on this platform this morning. We thank you, dear Lord, for every participant and every worshiper who have gathered here this morning just to hear a word from you. We have heard some mighty testimonies. Lord, we have witnessed some, some awesome prayers. And now, dear Lord, we gather, to, gather together around your throne just to hear a word from you. Oh, Lord, I ask right now that you who will infuse me with a fresh anointing of your spirit. Let nothing, no word that proceeds from my mouth proceed without your authority. We ask, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit will show me afresh. Let your spirit anoint my thought and let the words of my mouth be in sync with heaven above. Bless your waiting congregation and consume me with your spirit and give me authority to speak right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Second Kings chapter 20 and verse 1. It simply says, in those days, Hezekiah <clears throat> was sick near to death. And Isaiah the prophet, the son of Amos, went into him and said, Thus said the Lord, set your house in order, for you shall die and not live. Verse 2, and he turned his face towards the wall and prayed to the Lord, saying, Remember now, O Lord, I pray, how I have walked before you in truth and, a lo and with a loyal heart, and I've done what is good in your sight. And Hezekiah wept bitterly. Uh, my brothers and sisters, as you read this particular story, and we know this part of the story very well, this young king, and uh, Pastor Noshoni, I don't know, you know, if we know this, but King Ezekiah was just about 39 years old. And I don't know, I am not 39 years old, but if somebody comes to me and tell me I'm going to die at 39 years old, I'll be like, Lord, what are you thinking about? I'm only 39. I'm in the prime of my life. I'm, I still, you know, back in the island, I would say life begins at 40. In other words, my life didn't even begin yet. <laughs> and you're going to tell me, Lord, that I am going to die at 39. Not only was the Lord, you know, say he was going to die at, at 39, but this was 
was a rich guy. This was a guy who had accomplished much in his life. At 39, this young adult, he was the king. He was wealthy. He had power. He had everything in his hand. In other words, this was just about the time yeah, that you know, psychoanalysts would tell us that you know he was going to have self-actualization. He was going to live out his best life. But the message came in verse 1 of chapter 20 that he was going to die and not live. If you read the scripture carefully, as soon as that message was delivered, the next verse that should have applied in that particular, in this course would have been verse 20 and verse 21. Verse 20 and verse 21 of 2 Kings chapter 20 basically gave us the obituary of King Hezekiah. And if you read it carefully, it says, now the rest of the act of Hezekiah, all his might and how he made a pool and, and, and tunnel and brought water into the city, they were not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judea. And verse 21 says, no, sorry, not there. So Hezekiah rested with his fathers and Manasseh, his son, reigned in his place. In other words, at the end of verse one, because of this message that Isaiah had brought to Hezekiah, we should have been reading verse 20 and 21, because that's what I, Isaiah said you are going to die and not live so we should have been reading right there that Ezekiah rested with his father but instead of reading verse 20 and verse 21 we get to verse 2 and we saw a transformation in verse 2 verse 2 says but once he heard the message once he heard the message, he turned his face to the wall and he prayed to the Lord, saying, Lord, remember me. And I just read that, so I'm not going to read it again. But he turned his face to the wall and he started to pray. My brothers and sisters, because... Ezekiah prayed <laughs> because Ezekiah who humbled himself and wept bitterly before God. A conversation that should have ended started all over again. Somebody didn't say hallelujah with me this morning. My brothers and sisters, when we pray, we change the trajectory of our life. When we pray, we touch the very heart of God. When we pray, we start new conversation with God. Prayer, my brothers and sisters, can transform. Prayer, my brothers and sisters, can change. Instead of having his obituary, what we have is a brand new conversation. Because verse... <laughs> By the time we get to, 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 to verse 4, the Bible says, had it, and it happened. By the time Isaiah was out in the middle court, in other words, he had not yet even leave the presence of the, of the palace. The word of the Lord came back to him and says, hey, Isaiah, Ezekiah, my, pe my people have prayed, and I need for you to go back and have another conversation with him. My brothers and sisters, what am I telling you this morning? Prayer is a conversation changer. <laughs> What was your destiny yesterday? Once you prayed, can be transformed tomorrow. Remember now, you serve a mighty God. And when you pray, you touch his very heart. And it starts a new conversation all over again. Instead of this closed chapter, what we are having now is a conversation. And the only reason why Isaiah is having this conversation with Ezekiah. The only reason why Isaiah is having another conversation with Ezekiah is because Ezekiah prayed and that changes the trajectory and the conversation continued. <laughs> Hallelujah, I don't know where you are, my brothers and sisters, but I'm in cold, cold Massachusetts and I'm already feeling the power of God and I'm Somebody needs to say hallelujah this morning. Pray, my friend, we pray, my brothers and sisters. When we pray, it starts another conversation with God. And let me tell you something in case you don't know it. God loves to have a conversation with us. So don't think that your chapter is closed. Don't think it is all over and done. Just a little talk with Jesus. Oh, I wish I could sing that nigger spiritual this morning. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right 
all right. So have your conversation. Don't be afraid to have your conversation with God. Now, I know most of us know this aspect of the story. We know what happened in the story. So to be honest with you, Pastor Nishone, I won't spend all my time on this part of the story because there's another piece of the story which I need to get to before I close the message this morning. So for those of you on the line who may not know, basically a conversation with Isaiah and Ezekiah went like this, simply, you know, okay, I heard you, God heard your prayers and God will answer your prayer. But just, by the way, just to interject, you know, the SD Bible commentary tells us that this is perhaps one of the quickest response to prayer that we have ever seen in scripture <laughs> believe you me sometimes god says i am right here when we pray god says i am right here here's your answer sometimes we god answer a prayer even before we pray you know remember what he says and I ask, while you're yet speaking i will hear and even before you call i will answer so god has the answer to our prayers waiting there he's just waiting for us to pray you didn't get that <laughs> let me say that one more time God had already, God already have the answer to our prayers. He's just waiting for us to pray. In other words, just ask for it. God, it's there. It's just waiting for us. So even before you call, I will answer because I have it in my hand. I have it ready to give to you. <laughs> anyway, let me move on quickly. So Isaiah says to him, listen, God is going to get, because you prayed, and you wait bitterly and you, you 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 commit yourself you lock yourself in the closet and you have this one-to-one -one wrestling personal conversation with god god heard you and it's going to give you 15 years on your life we know that part but then in verse seven let me let me skip on down to the message verse seven says you know isaiah says to him take a lump of fig you know so and laid it on the boil and he recovered now this this verse kind of uh, wrapped up my mind a little bit Pastor Nashone, because I am thinking in my head hmm this guy is rich I mean Ezekiah was a, was a rich guy not only was he rich but he had all the resources of Judea available to him you know all the, the best doctors would have been available to him you know, oh, it, it, whatever somebody in his in, in his throne would have told him before that listen, you're sick, you got boils over your body. All you need to heal your boil is to get some fig and put some fig on it, and then you would have been healed. <laughs> you know, a man with all his resources, somebody would have known, some doctors in his, you know, in his terrain would have known that listen, all you need is some fig, they're fixed all over the place. Just go take thing you know and I, I looked into it and i and i looked it up but yeah there we there's no medicinal purpose more medicinal value in a fig you know but yet still he put the fig on it and it healed you see my brothers and sisters when you pray god wants us to participate in our prayer God wants us to participate by extending our faith so that we can experience the healing for ourselves. You can't pray for blessing, for financial blessing and lay in your bed. You got to get up. <laughs> You have prayed, but you have to now exercise your faith so that God can respond to your prayer. You can't just pray and lock up yourself and think it's going to pour through the roof. You kind of participate in it. The fig had no medicinal, medicinal purpose and the benefits, but yet still, all he did, all Isaiah did was to take the fig and put it on the boil, and it recovered, my brothers and sisters. When we pray, God wants us to exercise our faith. Remember, that was Jesus' uh, mantra when he was on this earth. Oh, he of little faith, if you only have little, as faith as a mustard seed, you can move some mountain. In other words, God wants us, our faith to be wrapped up. In our prayers, when we pray, have faith in believing that it can be done and it will be done. <laughs> Verse 8 tells us that they was healed. But Mike, I got to take us to verse 8 because this is when we land the plane this morning. This is where we bring it this morning. And this is my hallelujah for us this morning. This is where we showed hallelujah. And I'm done and I'm out of your ears. And if you have your Bibles, I want you to go to verse 8. 
And verse eight is that conversation, the conversation continues. And remember though, my family, my friends, the only reason why we're having this conversation is because Ezekiah prayed. Had he not prayed, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I told you before, we would have had the, the obituary. He would have rested with his father and his son would have reigned in his stead. But verse eight, we see a brand, you know, the conversation continues. And verse eight, the Bible tells us that Ezekiah and said to Isaiah, <laughs> hmm, what is the sign that the Lord will heal me and that I shall go up to the house of the Lord the third day? Then Isaiah said, this is the sign from the Lord. The Lord will do the thing which he has spoken. Shall the, the, shall the shadow go forward 10 degrees or shall the shadow go back 10 degrees? <laughs> then verse 10 says, Hezekiah says, look, paraphrasing me here, paraphrasing me, it's an easy thing for the shadow to go 10 degrees. <laughs> In other words, watch me now. The sun is already moving forward. So it's an easy thing for the shadow to go forward 10 degrees because it's already moving in that direction. The truth is 10 degrees is about 20 minutes. So you and I would probably even even notice that it would have gone back, you know, 10 degrees forward. That's an easy thing. But... <laughs> Let the sun go back 10 degrees. Then that's a good, then, then that's a difficult thing. First, I'll read verse 10 for you. It's an easy thing for the shadow to go down 10 degrees. No, but let the shadow go back 10 degrees. <laughs> now, verse 11, where's hallelujah comes in, my brothers and sisters. So Isaiah the prophet cried to the Lord, and he brought the shadow 10 degrees backward. <laughs> which was done on the dial of his eye. Now, my brothers and sisters, you didn't say hallelujah because you didn't get it. <laughs> so let me bring it home to you as simple as I can. You see, for the sun to move back 10 degrees or 20 minutes is not a natural occurrence. <laughs> That requires a supernatural occurrence. <laughs> but the reason why we're having this conversation from verse 8 to verse 11 is because Hezekiah prayed. And because Hezekiah prayed, God answered Hezekiah's prayer. And because God answers the prayer's prayer, Ezekiah and Isaiah now have this conversation. Tell me what God is, show me how God is going to answer my prayer. God says, in, to prove to you that I am going to answer your prayer, I am going to do a supernatural thing. I am going to take the sun and I'm going to move the sun back 20, 10, 20 minutes or 10 degrees. <laughs> My brothers and sisters, if you're not shouting, then let me give you your shout this morning so I can get out of your ears. Let me tell you something, my friends. When we pray, when we pray, hear this, my friend, there is nothing, absolutely nothing in the universe that can prevent God from answering our prayers. God have total sovereignty over the universe and nothing can stop him. Nothing can stand in the way of answering our prayers. My brothers and sisters, when Joshua needed help and Joshua prayed, the sun stood still for 23 hours and 40 minutes. It stood still when Moses wanted to cross the Red Sea. God parted the ocean and one, parted the sea, one there, one right and left, and they walked through on dry land. What am I telling you this morning? As you get up, as you have this conversation with God, have you, as you pray, there is absolutely 
no power in the universe that can prevent God from answering our prayers. So my brothers and sisters, pray with confidence, pray with faith. No, pray knowing that you are praying to a God who has absolute power, who has absolute authority, and there is absolutely nothing that can stand in his way of answering our prayers. So brothers and sisters, as we leave forward, as we leave morning manner this morning, you can move with confidence. You can pray in absolute faith, knowing that God has the answer to our prayers. God have the answers waiting for us and there is nothing in the universe that can stop him from answering our prayers. Whatever it is, God can make it happen. Just pray to him in faith and believe in that he can do it and it will be done. Heavenly Father, we thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your awesome power that when we pray, we start all over. We start conversation with you all over again. And from these conversations, dear God, we, you show us your awesome power. And because, Father, of your awesome power, when we pray, we know that there is nothing in the universe nothing that can stop you, can prevent you from answering our prayers. Help us, dear Father, to understand the awesome power that you possess. Help us, dear Father, to develop this faith so that when we pray, we can believe that you are the God who will intervene and answer our prayer and nothing, absolutely nothing, can stand in your way of answering our prayers. If we pray in faith, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. 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 Nothing or nobody. Nobody, nothing can amen. 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 What a word. I think God is trying to tell us something about faith this week. As you move into this weekend, as you move into the Sabbath, as you move forward, know that God has the power when you come to him in faith. Thank you, Pastor Teddy, for sharing that powerful message with us this morning. We are so grateful that you have brought the word undiluted to the Morning Manor family this morning. Thank you so much for being here once more. You know you are part of the Morning Manor family, so this is your family. I am going to, we, we have some birthday celebrations Celebrate celebrants that we will be celebrating today. Um, Elder Floyd is going to pray and sing for us this morning, but also um, remember to, if you missed it earlier, I, I mentioned that we have a morning manna baptism tomorrow. We are going to have a morning manna baptism tomorrow at the Who, and we're inviting you to tune in. For those that are not familiar with the YouTube page, I'm going to share the, the link for the YouTube page in the chat, so you can just save that. Come back tomorrow to cheer our sister Kathy Greer on for tomorrow. Uh, Elder Floyd, I'm going to uh, give the platform to you now so that you may pray for our speaker and also to celebrate our birthday celebrant this, this morning. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the word that went forth today. What a, what a, what a mighty God you are. Reminds us of what is written in Deuteronomy about you. Who's, which nation God is close as you are to, to them as when we pray. So we pray, Heavenly Father, that we'll continue to exercise faith in you. May we continue to start new conversations every day of our lives with you. Because we were reminded today that prayer changes things. And that not only that prayer changes things, but we must exercise our faith. And so we pray that you'll renew our faith in you, renew our faith in the fact that you are a God who hears and a God who answers. So now, bless us as we face the challenges of this day. We remember our speaker. Thank you for sending the man of God our way today. We ask that you continue to bless him as he continues to minister to the youth and young adults in his conference. Bless his wife and his children. 
We pray that your that your your blessings and benediction would rest upon him and his ministry. Again, we thank you for Pastor Williamson uh, today. In a special way, we want to remember uh, Shaquia Gilbert, who lost her mother suddenly. We pray now that you will be the God of all comfort to Shaquia. We ask that you will that you that you will meet her in this her broken space. We pray that you will be bring her comfort. We pray that you will surround her with people who can help her to get through this significant law. And we pray that the hope of the resurrection will burn in our hearts when you will make all things new and death and dying would be a thing of the past. We remember Kathy uh, Greer, who, who has said yes to you and will publicly demonstrate her commitment to you as she goes down into the baptismal font tomorrow. We ask that even now that you will build a hedge around her. We pray that you will protect her and, and keep her. We pray that she too will continue to develop that habit of prayer. And we pray now that your blessings will be upon her and that your blessings will be upon her family and that she will be an effective witness for you even, at, even today and after her baptism on tomorrow. Bless us all. As we as we we further wait upon you, we remember the birthday celebrants, all of them today. We thank you for adding years to their life, and now we pray that that you will continue to be the God that they want you to be to them. Meet their every need and help them to understand that it is because of you that they are alive today. So bless all the birthday celebrants and bless us all as we prepare to worship over this weekend. Say something to us individually as we meet in our worship spaces. And may we continue to trust you with our lives. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Elder Floyd. Saints, uh, we are wishing you a fantastic experience this weekend, whether you're worshiping on Sabbath or Sunday. Uh, we hope that you will experience the Lord with might and power. If you enjoyed the worship this morning, the link is in the chat for the YouTube channel. Do share with somebody. Since you have been blessed, be a blessing. And we look forward to connecting with you again on Monday for another powerful week of Morning Manor. Blessings, everyone. Blessings to everyone. Have a wonderful day and a happy Sabbath. Blessings, Blessings to everyone. Amen. A blessed weekend to everyone. Happy Sabbath.